I'm often asked, Dr. Josh, what is the point of studying a single speech or spending a whole bunch of time analyzing one film? What is the purpose? Why would that matter? Why would we want to spend all this time just looking at one particular text, one particular way that someone tried to influence another person? Well, this video provides the answer to that. And to do so, I'm going to use a little analogy. I'm going to think of the purpose of rhetorical scholarship as being similar to the purpose of developing a recipe book. So let's dive in. To start developing this analogy, I want to spend a moment thinking of rhetorical scholars as being like professional chefs. Now, if you've ever witnessed me eat a taco, it's usually I look at the taco, I kind of scarf it down, eat it real quick, and I don't think too much about the flavors. And if you were to ask me what I thought of it, I would probably just say, oh, it tasted really good, without much additional thought. Now, if a professional chef was sitting next to me, that answer probably would be different, right? The professional chef can explain that dish in a lot more nuanced than I would be able to without their expertise. They'd be able to explain, hey, the shell is to hold all the other ingredients together, right? Here's how the protein um, interacts with the lime, the acidity. Here's what, why the sauce is so important. Here's the sauce and how that provides the heat. And so they'd be able to explain all the ingredients and how all the ingredients were working together to create a tasty dish. Likewise, rhetorical scholars can say, hey, let's put a pause on the message that we just heard. We are inundated with messages all day long. And so a rhetorical scholar can come along and say, hey, let's think through that more deeply. Here are all the different dimensions to that, men that message you just heard. Here are all the parts. Here are all how all the parts are working together to influence you. And so we can be much more thoughtful about the messages that we receive when we are talking with a rhetorical scholar, just like we can be more thoughtful when we are talking to a professional chef about a dish. Both rhetorical scholars and professional chefs um, provide additional complexity for us. They show us the nuances in what we are either eating or hearing, and that also allows us to appreciate the messages much more. Right? Professional chef, when they talk about all the things that went into the dish, we can appreciate that dish and what the chef had done so much more. Likewise, when we hear a really persuasive speech, a rhetorical scholar can show us right, all the complexity to that speech, everything that went into that speech, which allows us to appreciate that message that much more. So rhetorical scholarship adds richness to how we experience our world. The professional chef makes our experience with that dish more meaningful by explaining that complexity. Likewise, a rhetorical scholar can help us have a more meaningful, engaging experience when we listen to King's I Have a Dream speech, for example. Because that critic, that scholar, is able to explain the complexity, all that went into making that message so persuasive and memorable. Rhetorical scholar Barry Brummett writes it like this. Rhetorical theory and criticism's ultimate justification and goal is pedagogical, to teach people how to experience their rhetorical environments more richly. And now if you want to learn a little bit more about the Brummett essay, please check out the link in the description below. I'm going to be referencing Brummett's article throughout this video. But Brummett's basic point is this, that as rhetorical scholars, we are helping people experience the persuasive messages more deeply, more richly, and that helps us have a more fulfilling life as we engage with all of those messages. Both food critics and rhetorical critics, those who study rhetoric, also carefully and critically assess the work that they are analyzing. For a food critic, that involves the systematic study of the dish that has been prepared for them, right? A food critic has a particular method. They think about the presentation first, then they might try each different component of the dish. Then they'll try the dish as a whole, and they will think through each piece of the dish, its presentation, its taste, its texture, its color, all of that as they make an assessment of that dish and how well it was put together. Likewise, rhetorical critic David Zarefsky says that rhetorical critics make clear the underlying dynamics of rhetorical work. And what that means is when a rhetorical scholar is studying a speech, for example, a speech given by President Barack Obama, they are thinking through systematically all the different aspects of that speech, the tone, the rhythm, the use of metaphor, repetition, about how Obama establishes his persona, how Obama wants you to think about him during that speech. So the critic can expose all the different parts of that rhetorical work like a food critic would do. 
as each rhetorical study is providing you with a detailed count of that text and how it influenced others to provide you that richness of the experience, each study is also providing you with, with more knowledge about how you might be influenced by other people, how you could influence other people or persuade other people, and just how you can experience your rhetorical world, how you can experience discourse at a deeper level. Now, why does that matter? Well, I'm going to go back to the world of cooking for a second. If you've ever watched a show that uses the mystery box challenge, you have probably witnessed as contestants have struggled to put together dishes that have steak, that have apples in it, that have watermelon bubblegum, and also carrots. And so the idea of that challenge is there's going to be a, a wide array of ingredients, and you as a chef still need to figure out a way to put them together to make a satisfying dish. And the idea is that the more ingredients that you know as a chef, the more ways you know how to use each ingredient, and the more recipes you know, the more prepared you are going to be to cook an awesome dish no matter what you find under that mystery box. Likewise, in rhetorical scholarship, the more rhetorical studies you have engaged and more texts you have analyzed, the more knowledge and options you will have no matter what the situation is. So as you build up that practical knowledge, you're going to know what to do no matter what you encounter. Brummett writes it like this, the more dance moves you know in the abstract, the better you will be able to dance no matter what the circumstances are. So right, if you are a really strong dancer, you know a lot of different genres, you have danced to a lot of different types of music, you can show up to any dance club, and you'll likely know what to do in that situation. And so the more we study rhetoric, the more we know how to be influential or persuasive or how we might be influenced and persuaded no matter what situation that we encounter. With that, we have reached the final comparison I'd like to draw, that rhetorical scholarship is like a cookbook. What does a cookbook provide you? It provides you with a lot of options. Right? Each page is providing you specific insight to understand that one recipe, how to put that recipe together, and that allows you right, to appreciate that dish much more. Right? all the components, how the components are supposed to work together, and is hopefully equipping you to create that specific dish whenever you'd like to do so. Just like that, each study in rhetorical scholarship provides us the insight necessary to understand one specific text. Right? Each study gives us the depth to understand and appreciate that text. And as we read through that analysis, we hopefully can equip ourselves with a way to understand how to make that persuasive text or to avoid texts that aren't persuasive or unethical. Moreover, the accumulation of recipes in that cookbook provides you with a whole bunch of different options, right? You're not going to cook the same dish for every occasion, right? You might want to have recipes that relate to breakfast for fancy occasions, for holidays like Thanksgiving, right? But you also might just want to have some simple recipes in there that you can cook at any time. The idea is that the cookbook gives you a whole bunch of options for what you could make each time you make a dish. Likewise, the accumulation of studies in rhetorical scholarship gives you a lot of options related to rhetoric. It gives you a lot of different ways that you can organize right, persuasive messages, how you can think about persuasive messages more deeply and how they might influence you. It gives you options related to the kinds of appeals you could craft or create. And so that each study is giving you more knowledge about metaphors, about narratives, about different stylistic devices, about how rhetoric frames our world. And so the more you read, the more options you have. And so rhetorical scholarship is like a cookbook. It gives you a whole bunch of options, but also gives you the depth to understand each specific text. And so that's why you would study a specific speech to develop one recipe to place in that recipe book that is giving your readers one additional option for how they might persuade others, how they might think about how they're being persuaded, and how might they might think about how language and discourse and rhetoric works on them and shapes their world. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Come back and learn a little bit more about rhetoric. Mushu and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.